Hey, in this lesson of uh, the graph for near, we are going to talk about the subgraph schema uh, and define the entities that uh, we need our subgraph to, to have. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about entities and relations. Uh, so in the last uh, lesson, we took a look at the manifest file and declared what information we were looking for. And if we head back into that directory there, if you recall, under entities, we define to account and log. So now we actually have to define those in the schema file. So it's basically analogous to defining the models in the model view controller format or framework. Um, and we define them here in this file here. So for our implementation, it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can actually create uh, multiple entities with various relationships between them one to many, many to one. Um, and I encourage you to take a look at the graph documentation if you wanna do that uh, for your subgraphs. But for this implementation, we're simply gonna create a couple of entities that we can use to map uh, properties to coming back off the chain uh, to get the variables that are housed in the, the log data. Um, the graph also provides a handy uh, json.fromString uh, function that we'll talk about more in the mappings, uh, but that uh, allows us to um, parse out a, a JSON object um, that we get back in those logs. So as we talked about before, it, it's a good idea to uh, code so that uh, a log in JSON format is, is returned in these, uh, or is indexed. Um, yeah, so if you recall, and I'll just grab this real quick. This is what uh, the logs look like um, in the in the contract. So all we need to do is create entities or models that are going to be able to map and, and hold the data that comes back in these various uh, fields here. So if we just scroll that down a little bit, we can start out by creating the entities that we need. So we need an account one. Now we start with type account at entity and then decorate it with this entity decorator. Open it up. And then all entities require a unique ID, which is um, stored in a string format. And then an exclamation mark, I just put it on the end, said, it, said it's required. Okay, also for the signer account, we're gonna have a signer ID, which is a type string as well. Um, also required. And then something called log, which in our case is gonna be an array of log, which is required. And that's array is required. That's it for the, the account entity. So now, as you see here, we've referenced another greater relationship between the account and this, this log entity. So we need to create that as well. So type log at entity. It up again. You need an ID required, uh, and then we're going to start mapping these different uh, variables here, the fields here, so that we have a place to put the data when it comes back into this log object. So uh, we'll take standard, which is of type string, and you know it's a string. It's in quotation marks there. You got a version type string. You don't have to do all the, the fields if you don't want. Uh, you only need to identify the ones that you actually want to map out uh, later on. Event type string. Event is important because uh, it corresponds to the function that we're listening for in the contract. Uh, so you're definitely going to want that one. And then moving into the data object, we've got the admin ID of string and we've got admin set which is actually big int and these ones don't need to be uh, required so we will leave off the exclamation mark and account ID is type string and moving into the next one and we're just putting all these fields in the same same object, but you could split them up if you if you wanted. Uh, 
we already have an account ID from there, so we don't need that one again, but we do need did registered an owner. So let's grab those. Did type. Did type string registered. This is a time, big int again, and owner type string. And voila, we have now defined the entities required um, for, for our subgraph. Now we have a place for the data coming back and being mapped from uh, the blockchain once it's indexed into, into these objects and, and their corresponding fields. We can just delete this now. Uh, one thing to point out, so these types here, um, you can check the graph docs for the types that you can use, uh, but there's a, a set number of scalar types that you can uh, use to identify um, the types of these fields, and you'll need to pick, uh, pick from them. All right, so now that that's done, if you recall back in package.json, we have this code gen um, command here. So what we can do with our entities built, oh, make sure you're in the folder. <laughs> that would help. CD to subgraphs, CD near subgraphs, up oh, CD near subgraph. Now let's try that again. We can run code gen. And it will run, it'll generate some boiler code, boilerplate code, which gets put into this generated here. And these are the types um, for the GraphQL schema that are, are generated. And then uh, get ready to move into the next lesson where we'll talk about the mappings.